everyone, and welcome to the Jeff Bullish Show. Today I have with me Luke Lissing, and he is in Toronto, Canada, and I'm at Lake Como in Italy. I always love this tech because we can chat to each other on the other side of the world in high definition. We can do it in video, we can do it in audio, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you on the show, Luke. Now, I'm going to introduce Luke, and uh, Luke is 22 years old, so he's a little younger than me. Not by much, but just a little bit. Um, he's a 22-year-old realtor that has reached the top 1% bracket of realtors in Canada within two years, and that's quite an achievement. I would say he's an overachiever, um, but we're going to discover more about his journey here today. And we recommend him as, uh, and Luke and his team have gone done over 180 million real estate sales. They closed over 300 plus deals over the last two years. And he's also started a side business in the automotive industry in 2022 with his younger brother and scaled to six figures within four months. So Luke, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. So Luke, it looks like you're almost born an entrepreneur. Um, so when did your, you know, starting, you know, this entrepreneurial journey start for you? When, what was the first sort of inspiration? Um, and when did you start your first business? It started off in high school. And I think just like most of us, some of us have that burning desire inside of them that just doesn't go away. And I didn't know what that was. I just felt very uncomfortable with going through the indoctrination of the education system. That's what I call it. That's what I believe it is. And I felt uncomfortable. I didn't know what it was. I didn't understand the economics behind it and the history behind the education system and, and finance and things of that sort. But long story short, when I was 17 years old, I just stumbled upon the idea of starting a social media marketing company because us you know, Gen Zs, millennials are always on our phone. We know social media very well, but a lot of business owners don't. So that is that was a bridge that identified that I could use my knowledge in that space to help business owners that don't have the knowledge. So I started off uh, building a marketing agency at the age of 17, turning into 18-ish. And most of my clients were in real estate. They're realtors. And then at the age of 18, going into 19, I got my real estate license. And that's how I got started in, in real estate sales. That's cool. Now, timing can be everything. Um, well, not everything, but a big part of success. Now, I believe in the last two to three years that the real estate market has basically exploded around the world in a lot of places as people move to work remotely. And I believe that Canada was one of the biggest markets uh, that will move the most in um, in terms of percentage gain in the world. Tell us a little bit about um, that market timing. It, it was actually very tough time. And I'll tell you why, because I'm 22 years old now, right, Jeff? And, and, and if it wasn't too long ago where everything was locked down. I started off my real estate career at the start of the pandemic. Right. So not only was I 19 years old with zero experience with a baby face like this, I'm now also entering the toughest time because we couldn't meet anybody and everybody's scared. Nobody, nobody's thinking about real estate when there's a possibility of dying from a virus that we didn't know about. So I entered my start of my business with, with, with the start of the pandemic. And then two years later, two and a half years, two and a half years later, after even the lockdowns are over, we're now in this recession. So timing hasn't been in my favor. And to your point, it has been everything, but it's also something I'm very grateful for because I've developed the skills to go through and, and develop a business at such a fast pace, fast rate during the toughest times. So when these times do pass, guess who's going to have it very easy? Me. Because I've done it all through the toughest times. I couldn't see people for two and a half years. Everything was closed. I couldn't take my clients out to dinners and lunches and coffees. We had to do Zoom calls. And there's something different when you can sell to somebody or build a relationship with somebody face to face. So I, I, I didn't have that luxury. The timing was tough. And now we're in, a, we're, in a, we're in a recession where interest rates are flirting around 6 to 7% in certain areas of the world. Now it's getting harder to purchase and qualify for a mortgage. There's less people buying. It's getting tougher, but same work needs to get done. Exactly. So do you think your skills at social media marketing um, helped you build relationships remotely? Yeah, I think it's a leverage that I had because, like, for example, when I started both businesses my, in my real estate and in my auto company the only reason why i was able to get it off the ground so quickly is because i had that background knowledge in social media marketing 
I knew right away that when I was going to start my future condo, my real estate company two and a half years ago, that for me to get my first set of clients, I had to start advertising right away. And I knew that already. I knew exactly what to do because my previous existing clients, they were my guinea pig. I knew how to set up their landing pages, their lead forms, their ads, their campaigns, everything. All I had to do was copy and paste it, send it over to my own business, and boom, I had my own set of leads. So that it did, it definitely gave me the the leg up. And now we're living in a time where we have TikTok and organic reach has been just blowing up. So you don't even have to spend much money. You don't have to do anything too creative. You can get in front of a camera like this, chop it up, put it on TikTok, and you can reach four or five hundred views at a time. Cool. Now let's wind it back a bit. Um, sure. You started a side hustle for your younger brother. And uh, so, and I believe you got a 50 50 split on that. So, that was also, in other words, the marketing agency was a side hustle. We did it during at high school. Okay. So, it wasn't like you went and got a job and then that's how you started making money. You actually started making money while you were actually studying. So, tell us a little bit about um, starting a side hustle with your brother in car detailing, I believe it was. 100%. I, when you can, when you've done it once, it gets easier and easier. The first $100,000 that you're ever going to make will be the hardest money you'll ever make because then after that, it compounds. So for example, when I started my future condo, my real estate company, the very first thing that I did was I called everybody that I know. The average person knows 200 people. So if you know 200 people, that means your network also knows 200 people. Therefore, your network is actually 40,000 people. I had that foresight. I understood that I didn't know just 200 people. I was looking for the people that know the people that I know. So what I did was I called everybody that I know for my future condo. And then I said, listen, I'm in real estate. I don't want to sell you anything. I just wanted to actually ask you for your advice on the marketing that we do. Can I get your feedback? call everybody that I know. I asked them that. They would say, no problem, Luke. I would love to give you the advice that I have or my feedback. Then I would sit, respond and say, great, do me a favor. Open up your phone, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe to my, to my business newsletter. That way, boom, now I have 200 people in my database. And every single week, they're getting an email from me, an Instagram post, seeing that I'm in real estate. These people may have never purchased from me directly, but if every single week they see Lucas doing something real estate related, they're going to think of me just in case they meet somebody in the subway that's thinking about buying a home. Boom. They're going to make that introduction to me because I'm always top of mind. So that's what I did for my future condo. The reason why auto vision GTA, my side hustle was able to scale to six figures within four months is because I already knew exactly what to do based on my previous business experience. I called everybody that I know. I told them I have a detailing company. If they need a detailer or if they know a dealership that needs assistance with detailing, let me know. If not, no problem at all. Let me get your feedback on the marketing that we do. Now I'm always top of mind. And 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 it took me, just to put into perspective for real estate, it took me a year and a half to do my first deal. After that, I started doing deals upon deals for Auto Vision GTA. It took me a week to get my first client because it's obviously a much smaller sale, but it took me four months to get to six figures. So... <clears throat> In terms of what you're doing, where did you, this inspiration for marketing, okay, social media is a platform, but you've got to have the ideas. In other words, you identified uh, 200 contacts out of those, those people have 200 each, 40,000. you got good maths. It's great. So um, where did the idea come from to basically power up your network? Where did that idea come from? Was it books? Was it reading a blog? Was it watching TikTok? Where did the ideas come from? Yeah, I, I instinctively knew that I had what it took to get shit done. But at the age of 17, 18, you don't know anything. I'm 22. I've sold $180 million worth of real estate. I still don't know anything. So I knew at the age of 17, when I was getting, like, you know, my business has started, I'm thinking here, like, I'm working relentlessly eight to nine hours a day after high school. So I would spend seven, this first seven hours of the day in school, six, seven hours a day in school and the rest of the night working on this side business on, on this marketing agency. But the, the progress was extremely slow. I'm just thinking I all I need right now is somebody to tell me exactly what to do. I don't need motivation. I don't need someone to teach me how to be disciplined. I've, I've always been a disciplined person mm -hmm. because of, of, of my upbringing. I'm Filipino. It's, it's because of my upbringing. I've, I've, I've always been disciplined. 
I don't need that. I don't need somebody to try to pump me up. I don't no. I just, what do I do? What's the actionable step? How do I write this email? How do I, what do I say on the phone, on the sales call that I just knew I needed that one person. So when I got licensed in real estate, six months into my career, I went to a networking event and there I met a guy named Jamal and he was a real estate investor, whatever. We made a connection. And then he added me to a WhatsApp group chat with like 11 other real estate investors in there, a bunch of them would send each other deals like, oh, what do you guys think about this deal in Toronto? What do you think about this deal in London, Ontario? Whatever it is, somebody sent a deal in Windsor, Ontario, and I saw the listing agent. His name was Mike Seal. The deal was so good of a deal. I clicked on Mike Seal's profile, his, his website, and I saw his website and he had a ton of listings. And I'm thinking, this guy has like 14 active listings. That's a lot of listings. He's killing the game. And it's investment in real estate, which is what I'm passionate about. So then I call Mike and I say, like, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. How do you have 14 listings? How do you have 14 people that trust you to sell their property? I don't have a single person that wants to even look my way. How are you doing this? Whatever. He, he gives me quick advice on the phone. Then I stop and say, Mike, you know what? I'm going to move to Windsor, which is a five-hour drive away from me. So I'm moving to Windsor and I'm going to learn from you. He says, whoa, 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 kid. Relax, relax. He says, don't do that. Speak to my friend, Jazz Takar in Toronto. He does very similar things to me, but he's closer to you. Just speak to him and see where that goes. Yeah. I had no idea who this guy was. I ended up Google, Google searching this guy. And Jazz at the time was the number one real estate broker across Royal LePage, Canada. And for your listeners that don't know Royal LePage, it's the Canadian equivalent to Keller Williams. So it's a massive organization. It's probably the second biggest one in Canada behind Remax. Anyway, I called Jazz and I said, Jazz, I got your number from your friend, Mike Seal. I was ready to make the move to Windsor, Ontario, just to, just to work with him. But instead, he asked me to reach out to you. He says, no problem, Luke. How long have you been in the business for? I said, six months. He said, how old are you? At the time, I was 19 years old. And he says, well, how many deals have you done? I said, zero. He says, well, unfortunately, we don't take on new agents. Well, I said, well, Jazz, you're making a big mistake if you don't meet me. And then he was like, he was, he was quiet for like seven seconds. And then, and then he was like, all right, meet me on Monday. He sends me a, he texted me a link to his calendar. I book a time slot for 8 a.m. on a Monday. Showed up, dressed well, showed up early. And he says, before you even spoke, I knew we were going to take you on the team because you had the right attitude. So to answer your question, Jeff, networking to me is the most important thing. I think anytime I start any business, I look at the top of the industry and I then think, how do I bring that person value? I might not know anything now. I might not have the secret sauce to propel their business within the next two months. But I mean, if they like me because of my attitude, my persona, whatever it is, that's enough to get my foot in the door. So how big your network now, Luke? My network now is quite extensive. If I wanted to call and meet some very important politicians here in Ontario, I can make that happen within a couple of hours. Okay, that's awesome. So, all right. So you're interested in investment real estate. Uh, you're two years, is it two years in now since you started? Three. In real estate, techni technically three and a half, maybe four. Because I okay. got, it's funny you asked that, because I got licensed at 18 and then the next day I turned 19. So technically I started at 19. I'm turning 23 in a couple of months. So okay. you can okay. kind of do the math there. <laughs> okay. So you've, obviously learned from the best in your industry and you weren't afraid to contact them and show them that your attitude was one of motivation, drive and uh, discipline. So what's the next steps for you going forward? Where does Luke want to be in 10 years time? Where do I want to be in 10 years? I think that's a good question. Yeah. It's funny because I, I, I often don't think that far ahead, but I do. I just know within the next couple of years. A few years, I'll be doesn't like, matter. Yeah, like I know in the next few years, for example, I've yet to cross the seven-figure mark. So I know in the next year or so I'll be there. Very, it, it'll be very likely I end up there in the next 12 months. In the next few years, it's really hard to say. I think as long as I achieve exactly what it is that I want to achieve. Like my metric is is how much revenue can I generate? A lot of people, for example, like a basketball player, their metric is how many times can they get a ball into a net, right? Mm -hmm. That's their metric. That's what determines how successful they are, how successful they are. For me, it's just how many dollars can I generate? 
but I also like to like I'm 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 a I'm a I'm a Christian man. Like I'm very religious, and I don't just use that term loosely. Like I I I pray every single day, all that stuff. So I never I'm never out to scam anybody. I, I do it with integrity. So so my do- my 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 metric is how many dollars can I earn. And, and right now I'm looking to cross that seven figure mark and, and really in the back of my mind, by the time I'm 25, I'd like to cross the, the eight figure mark. So what makes you interested? This is a question. So what makes you motivated and interested in real estate? Is it because you, I know when we had a chat before, you said one of the things that motivated you originally was desperation. Um, so what motivates you today? Uh, because sometimes the, the ideas for business come from either inspiration or desperation. Okay. In other words, a good idea or we're going, I really need to put money on the table. The founders of Airbnb, they needed to put food on the table um, because they weren't able to pay the rent as well. So what, what motivates you? What is it? Because dollars are one thing, but that there's more, there's more to life than dollars. What else motivates you, Luke? I think the idea of becoming a person that's the opposite of who I am today and the opposite of who I'm going to be in the future, that the idea of that person scares me. So somebody uh, like last week on a podcast asked me like, who, who was my hero growing up? Assuming that I was motivated by a hero and idol trying to emulate somebody else. I never had a hero. I've always had a villain and I was always terrified of the idea of me being extremely overweight, broke, single, lonely, Smoking weed all day, playing video. That terrified me. So I vowed years ago, I was probably even four years old, not even knowing what weed was. Just kidding. But <laughs> I just vowed my entire life, I would never live that image. It's a it's, it's disgraceful to myself and it's, disres- it's disgraceful to God. So what motivates me is the fear of not living to my true potential. Because I know that within the next couple of, at, at any moment, it can all go away. But if I'm in my best physical form, if I have the sharpest mind, I can get back up like this in a matter of seconds. So just me being as sharp as possible, just knowing that for whatever reason, there's there's, there's that competition that's out there, the slight edge that they have, that can be the one up on me. Just that idea of somebody being better than me or the or or, or the future, my even my future self being better than who I am today, judging who I am now, just that villain, if you will, that's what keeps me going. I never really had like some kind of positive, if you will. Like to me, that's positive, but not positive in the sense where it's just like, I don't know. Like it's just that villain, that image that terrified me. And that's what really just kept me going. Right. So it's almost a negative motivation. In a way. So you can, you can, some people call it negative, but to me it was positive. To me, it's positive because it, it, it it's molded me to who I am now. Mm-hmm. And if I'm happy with where I am now, then I have to be thankful for my thought processes in the past, the way I thought and the decisions I made in the past. So some may say it's a negative because it's that fearful act of it, but I think of it positively because it's made me who I am now. My brother can confidently say he has a six figure business at the age of 20. He's my younger brother because I had that discipline. I put in the reps in at an early age to learn how to build businesses at a rapid pace rapid pace and now we can easily do it on a, on a win and and that can only have happened because because of that that image of me not being able to do that i didn't like that i wanted to be able to to, to do it quickly and now here's my villain i was able to scale auto vision gta to four months but my villain is why can't i do it in two months now now that's irritating me i gotta be, get better now i can do it in two months and then one day is going to be two weeks and then two days and then two hours it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to that point. So that's what keeps me going. I think that's what makes it positive. What keeps you up at night? Man, I, I was just having like nightmares last night because I started like AutoVision GTA expanded because we were solely just a detailing company last year. But because of the relationships that I've developed in the dealership space, because a lot of our clients are dealerships, we've now expanded to flipping cars. And now what kept me up until 2 a.m. last night, I was in bed at like, 10 p.m. on my phone, fell asleep for like 30 minutes. And then I woke up again at 2 a.m. because I had just this burning thought of how are we going to scale the flipping business? Because I have leads upon leads coming in, trying to sell their cars to me. And I'm it's my job not to flip the cars. 
I'm thinking, how am I going to do this at a scale? Because now I need towing companies. I need, I need staff that can do the appraising. And just that's where my mind's going. And then on top of that, I've sold three, three real estate deals this week. Now I got to firm those up so my clients don't back out. So that's, that's where my head's going. It's just like the little things. That's why some may say it's a bad thing. That's why I don't really think 10 years ahead. I just know exactly what needs to get done today. And that's what kind of keeps me going. Cool. So it sounds like you're doing a lot of it yourself uh, or are you, or do you delegate? I do delegate. And I think right now, like on the, on the, on the, on the car business side, I'm, I'm so grateful because I also have a strong network there. Like I mentioned the story of Jazz Takar and real estate who mentored me in the car business. I had a good friend that mentored me as well. And him and I started to partner up on certain business ventures, which is the flipping cars because he has his own dealership. He has the infrastructure. He has the towing, all of that stuff. I just have to help put those pieces together to make the process look smooth. So like I, I do delegate. I do have a strong team. I have a strong network of people that can get stuff done. But ultimately, I'm, I'm the head. I'm not the tail. So I have to make the final decisions. I have to make sure everything's running in order. Otherwise, my ship will sink. Cool. So what's the, just to wrap it up here, um, you're obviously motivated, disciplined, um, driven. Now, what are the major lessons that you could share with other people that want to start an online business, start a side hustle, start a, be an entrepreneur? What are the top tips you'd like to share with them today just to wrap things up? Yeah, this is going to be coming from the perspective of someone that's 22 years old. So, and I would say, yeah, I would say have an ego, but don't have an ego. I, until this day, will humbly sit next to the people that I know who have accomplished more than me. And I'll say, tell me what you know. I don't give a shit about my accolades. I don't care that I'm in the chairman's club for Royal Page Canada. I don't care. I'm not that cool. Tell me what you know, because you know something I don't know. And I will humbly listen to you. If you approach networking and relationship building from that perspective, Nobody likes the guy that tries to put on the image of a hotshot. Nobody likes that. Even if you're actually good at what you do, nobody just likes the hotshot. Come across as someone that's genuine. That is how you network. You've got to network your way to the top. I couldn't have built any of my businesses if I didn't have people that were already killing the game, teach me everything. And the only reason why they taught me everything is because I humbly listened. They said, jump. I said, how high? I'm in that position in my life. I don't know if that's just me being 22 years old. I don't know. I might be like that when I'm 42 years old, where I still humbly listen to the billionaire telling me, Luke, you're doing this wrong. I'm never too arrogant, never too cool. My advice for people is to network, connect with the Jeffs of the world, the Lukes of the world, anybody that can teach you what you don't know, humbly listen to them, humbly learn from them, assuming they have your best interest in my, at heart and in mind. And, and it, it'll be the best decision you make. Just put all the ego, all the garbage to the side. For me, when I was 19 years old, when I reached out to Jazz, I was actually his assistant for the first full year. That was the hardest year of my life because I'm this kid thinking, oh, I'm, I know what I am I have the drive, I have the work ethic. Why am I an assistant? Why am I not in sales yet? Why is he not teaching me how to do the actual business? He was making me do all this bullshit. That was the hardest year of my life because – my ego was getting in the way. I wanted mm. to be something I wasn't yet. So I, looking back at it, it's just like, I'm glad I kept it cool. I'm glad I was humble because if I just blew up in his face and said, never mind, I'm doing this by myself because, because I don't want to be your assistant anymore, who knows where I'd be? I'm sure I'd figure it out, but who knows where I'd be? So to sum it up, what I've heard from you is that number one, network and use, and as we discussed during our chat today <clears throat> you can use you can do that with uh, technology tools and social media as you've done number two don't let ego get in the way of learning is that your top that's two that's it okay um and i came across a great term when i interviewed someone like uh recently and they said your ego is not your amigo and you've just huh. <laughs> and you've actually just basically amplified that message Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So thanks, Luke. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I don't know what you call it in America. In Australia, okay, thanks, mate. Great for a great chat. Uh, in America or in Canada, it might be, thanks, buddy. It's been great. Um, but thank you very much for 
sharing your passionate, youthful drive and motivation. It's been a revelation and I feel I'm absolutely uh, glad we caught up and chatted between Lake Como and Toronto. Thank you very much, Luke. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Jeff, for having me.